may I invite uh, Bharat Balaji from the dais? He is renowned film maker, the first film I know of, presented at Toronto International Film Festival in 2004. His film Manian, starting Dhanush and Parvati, and he is the first person to have worked on the IMAX format, producing Aishwarya Rai, starring Taj Mahal. Uh, most of the times we have seen the work, but we have not seen the person behind it because we have all have seen Vande Mataram uh, and then the person is here. He is known for Vande Mataram, a big idea for India that took the world for film communication by storm. His other notable works includes Guru of Pieces, a docu feature on Nobel Prize winners, Dalai Lama, Nelson Mandela, etc and Incredible India, the national anthem with 50 of India's mistros. He recent, his recent endeavor is uh, Virtual Bharat, a series of 1,000 films on untold human stories of India. So, uh, please welcome him with a round of applause. We have here uh, with us Krishna Prakash Magdum. I will invite Magdum sir on the dais. We all know his work. He is a former director of National Film Archive of India. He has started his career uh, in media communication wing of Ministry and Commerce of uh, Commerce and Industry at New Delhi. He has written a number of articles in English, in Marathi, and we have uh, learned a lot about history of Indian cinema and his upcoming book, because it is a very, very interesting book, I feel, that is on Gandhi and cinema. I think this will be the first uh, this kind of uh, book, which is including the, the films made on Gandhi. And uh, Sir has written it, and we are, so we are waiting for this book very eagerly, because there are so many myths um, uh, about Gandhiji and his films. And we have uh, with us Charudatta Bhagavad. May I invite Charudatta? On the dais. He is a well known author and playwright. His uh, Marathi play Keshava Madhava was very big hit. He is a screenwriter, screenplay writer. His poster boys and Vikunta, these films were very well known. And he is writing the popular television uh, shows like Vagni Ki Dunya. So I think we have very, very eminent uh, personalities with us. Uh, so I will invite uh, Charudat uh, for his presentation. <laughs> As you are comfortable. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it has been uh, a wonderful uh, session till today and uh, yesterday it was great. And uh, my predicament is, uh, I was supposed to be the one down batsman, now I am the opening batsman. So just <laughs> after lunch, uh, batsman has been told that you will open the innings. So it's a bit difficult uh, task uh, because being an opener uh, is a uh, task of legends. Uh, I had a flow in mind but I don't know how it will go. Uh, let's see. So, uh, coming to the topic, Indian cinema engagement with foreign audience and uh, advanced technology. First, uh, I thought, how do I begin this session? And then I realized that the best thing to do would be to look into my own life. And uh, it will connect somewhere to uh, this flow. So, I'll uh, share some snippets from my life, uh, which I think uh, will align with the theme as uh, it evolves. So, uh, in my earlier childhood, uh, you know, uh, around the age of 5 to 8, I used to live in uh, dense forest areas of Maharashtra. There is a district called Chandrapur in Maharashtra, Vidarbha region. So, I was uh, in the dense jungles of Chandrapur. There was uh, no civilization within the span of about 60 uh, kilometers. There was no means of popular entertainment around me. Uh, the only means of entertainment was a tape recorder that I had uh, at my place and the radio was ever flowing uh, at my household. And the only uh, highlight of uh, those times used to be a film that was screened under the open sky on Friday evenings within our uh, colony. It was barely a colony of about 100 uh, people 
a uh, few technocrats and some laborers. All of them used to be together to watch this. Uh, I'm getting goosebumps right now, just uh, you know, uh, reminding of those times. So uh, you all must have seen the fantastic film Swades. The song O Tara Ye Tara is exactly how I saw the world or saw cinema for the first time in my life. Or uh, for the uh, better informed, Cinema Paradiso could be a, a parallel to my uh, exposure to cinema. That was the uh, first instance of my exposure to technology and cinema together. Old world screen, film cans, uh, uh, the film cans used to, uh, and uh, pardon me, I might overshoot the time uh, because uh, I'm talking off the cuff. So uh, the film cans used to travel about 60 kilometers in a rickshaw to come down to that place in the jungle. And I used to wait eagerly because uh, I was mad about films and I still am. My friends call me the first day first show guy. So these days I don't get to enjoy that much, but that's what I am. Then I cut to the next uh, era in my life where I was introduced to children films. Uh, you know, I saw films like Kaya Palat, Bal Shivaji, and uh, Jungle Book. It was a more civilized uh, approach to uh, cinema, but still cinema was a part of my life. Stories were following me uh, everywhere. Uh, then I cut to a scene uh, in uh, maybe 2004. I was in Delhi. Uh, no, sorry, I was in Chennai. And uh, I had heard a lot about Tamil films, uh, the films uh, that are made, but I cannot understand the language. I did not understand the language. We did not have the subtitling so prevalent in those times. So I went to the Satyam multiplex in Chennai. As a single uh, guy, I entered there at an odd hour, at 3.30, 4 o'clock. And I explained to the uh, ticket counter guy that I am from Bombay and I am interested in watching a film. So he was so excited that this guy doesn't know Tamil, but he wants to watch a film. So he said, uh, sir, super hit film, 30 minutes come. <laughs> so he told me to go to a coffee shop uh, next door and wait there and 30 minutes, uh, he said, come. I did not know what film he was going to suggest to me or give me a ticket for. I came in, it was an odd show. The film was called Kadal. It was a sleeper hit in those times, uh, made by Shankar sir. And uh, I did not know the lang language. I entered, there were hardly a few people there. Now this is uh, bridging the gap between you know technology, cinema, I'll come to that. Uh, there were hardly any people there. There was just one gentleman sitting quietly, so I thought I should get some company, you know. So I uh, sort of sneaked uh, besides him and we got talking. And uh, he was also very excited, a guy from Bombay doesn't know Tamil but wants to see a film. So he was more than happy to, you know, be friends with me and sort of uh, entertain me. And that uh, gentleman told me that, uh, you know, I am a driver for a big industrial house and my uh, duty gets over at about 3 o'clock. 3.30, I come to this show every day. <coughs> he watched that film every day, the 3.30 show. And he was my interpreter or, uh, you know, the translator with whatever little English that he knew. So this was human interface working to make a film work for me. Uh, this is a part of technology, this is human technology, the human touch that we talk about. Now we have moved away from uh, that. But this is in a way human technology and the soft power involved because he sold that Tamil film to me that day. I did not know Tamil. And he made me get in flow with that film. Now we cut to a different era, it's about uh, 2007, I was in Delhi uh, for one of the film festivals. The film festivals was a major thing then, so I was watching films and suddenly I was given a reference of a shop in Palika Bazaar. Where I went, it was a powerhouse of different DVDs from different uh, cultures, different cinemas and everything. Of course, they were pirated, but uh, that was the norm then. And that guy sold me a number of DVDs because he knew all the, about world cinema. I didn't know nothing. And he used to tell me that ye, uh, ye sahab leke gaya tha. one of the great filmmakers has seen this. Aap ye rakhiye, aap ye wo rakhiye. And suddenly I ran a bill of about 3000 rupees. I didn't have that much cash. So he said, no problem, hai, sir. Aap credit card. Dijiye. That was the first time I used credit card for such a transaction. 
कि तीन हजार रुपये आप क्रेडिट कार्ड पे दे दीजिए दिस इज हाउ टेक्नोलॉजी एज इवॉल्ड डीवीडीज फिल्म देवर सब टाइटल्स देन एंड यू कुड वॉच इट ऑन डीवीडी प्लेयर्स एंड कंप्यूटर्स एंड नाउ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू आई हैव ऑल द एप्स इन द वर्ल्ड ऑन माई फोन एंड आई हैव सीन वॉट you name uh, the language and I, i have seen the films interestingly there comes a, a midpoint where i had uh, sort of grown aware of the indian cinema uh, in about 2015 uh, there came uh, this film called drishyam uh, which was a malayalam and a lot of friends uh, sort of suggested it to me i watched the film of course with uh, subtitles this time and i loved the film and then I saw Malaya uh, Drishyam in Malayalam, Tamil, Kannada, and Hindi, and then uh, I got to know that uh, this film was inspired by a, a, a Japanese novel, a Devotion of Suspect X. I read the novel and I saw the Chinese version of the film. So this was what content and technology did to me in a span of about uh, what 20-30 uh, years, and right now. Uh, we are at uh, this juncture where we have everything available to us at the uh, touch of a fingertip now my growth as a media consumer with technology we have seen at this juncture i am both a creator and a consumer of technology and we are talking about taking a uh, indian cinema to foreign audiences but for a maharashtrian tamil cinema is foreign in that sense we, though we are part of india for tamil uh, cinema i am a foreign audience for marathi cinema a guy in uh, kerala is a foreign audience so we should not be neglecting this internal market that we have within ourselves and just to share a statistics uh, somewhere in 2019 there were about 14.6 crore tickets sold i am not talking about the value of money i am talking about 14.6 crore tickets sold in india for films and this might seem a little number as compared to what we are but it is more than the population of about 100 countries in the world entire population of about 100 countries in the world so we have this and more than this now say let's say 20 crore uh, population is available to us it is an internal uh, market which we should not uh, neglect at all uh, that is the first point i uh, wanted to make and how did this happen or how is it happening right now i think uh, you must have heard this popular phrase data is oil every click that we make every view that we take is a data point and with the help of technology i think we should exploit this power of data and data science and data analytics to our best ability to strengthen uh, the world of uh, cinema there is a quote data is meant to lessen our reliance on perception and to help us replace our beliefs with facts so if we harness this power of data in various ways there are two things that will happen there are creators and there are consumers so on the creator side the data can be harnessed in a uh, way that there will be created content and there will be consumers and there will be new content which needs to be created so the created content to be matched with consumers you could uh, use the power of data in various ways there is geography there is uh, uh, geopolitical awareness blah 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 as in i could uh, give you many data points and if you are thinking of making a like someone was asking a question in the earlier uh, session as to uh, how do we tell the producers what to produce how to produce i think we never because uh, creativity is a very individualistic craft but there has to be a method to this madness there can be a method to this madness if we harness this power of data because mujhe laga maine film bana di aapko laga aapne film bana di ye to hota hi rahega but if there is a collective effort ki is tarah ki kahaniyan aap keh sakte hain is tarah ki kahaniyon ka ek audience hai तो आपको तो कहानी बनानी है सर सो यू कैन जस्ट ट्वीक योर स्टोरीज अ लिटिल बिट टू गेट इन टू द फ्लो ऑफ वॉट्स इन द वर्ल्ड एंड ज्वाइन द लार्जर ऑडियंस बिकॉज 
Unfortunately, cinema is a commercial art. For lack of a better word, it has to earn a return on investment. And for that, I think this power of data is a major, major tool uh, that can be uh, utilized. Uh, now, uh, uh, on the policy side, there could be a centralized uh, body which would track all this data and maybe exchange or barter data with other countries also, where we get to know their consumption patterns and we give them our consumption patterns. So we fine tune our content or match our content to the right markets in a better manner. Uh, so this will be the power of data that we can uh, use. Uh, and uh, coming to how do we propagate our films better. Now taking a leap from this, there will be uh, just three words. Entice, engage and enrich. For me, if a Tamil film entices me, then engages me and enriches my experience, I am sold. For a Japanese guy, if an Indian film in any language it entices him, engages him and enriches his experience, he will be sold. Now there are ways in which one could uh, talk about enticing a uh, new audience or people say, uh, I don't understand Malayalam. But a Malayalam blockbuster is available to me in a very abbreviated form, a condensed form because uh, time these days is a precious commodity. Uh, we are unsure of whether to invest two hours in this film or that film. So if you give me a fifth and I have done this about 10 years ago where we converted uh, some of the Indian blockbusters into 15-20 minutes capsules and they were well received in the focus group uh, that we showed it to. Say so we condensed Shole into 15 minute capsule. Now this sort of engagement with new audience which doesn't have any exposure to Indian cinema could be a good way to introduce them to Indian cinema and then they will go in for longer formats is one of the thoughts that I had to uh, share. Uh, again, uh, cinema uh, watching happens a lot by referencing as in I tell you go and watch that film. So our own people, our own consumers are our brand ambassadors. They could be telling people about what films to watch, how to watch and uh, diaspora uh, in the countries outside could be a good marketing vehicle for us because they have seen those films themselves and they uh, tell their uh, uh, foreign friends there that maybe you should give uh, this film a look and he will easily buy into that experience is uh, how I look at it. And uh, yes. Uh, now we come to aspect of distribution. Uh, there are lacunas in the distribution system for sure. But I think uh, for the entire Indian cinema, there could be just uh, as simple as one single app called Film India, which is enabling you to watch the films anytime, anywhere in the world, whether in India or outside. And there will be some films that will of course go with one of the popular OTT platforms, but the rest of the films who don't make the uh, uh, requirements of those OTT platforms can always be leveraged. That's our asset. That's our data. Uh, that's our pride. So if we have a centralized uh, app called Film India, where you can see any film made in the Indian languages, like uh, many films are not available uh, to people. Like one of the examples that I might give is uh, Mr. Sudhir Mishra's first film, Ye Wo Manzil To Nahi. I am a diehard fan of that film. I had seen it as a child. I have not been able to see that film ever again. So if it is available to me somewhere in a digital format, I will definitely go and uh, watch it. Uh, parallelly, for the Indian uh, consumers, this digital route is uh, okay. Uh, we have been talking about increasing cinema halls. If that can happen, I think uh, that will further boost uh, the effort. And uh, there could be barter of content treaties with other countries, where we engage with their content, country to country basis which opens up uh, newer avenues for them and us. And I think this will be a mutually beneficial uh, arrangement for uh, all the countries and we uh, get the reach uh, that we are looking at. And uh, 
one of the very last things that I want to say is uh, I am on the creator side right now. So the creators need to be better enabled in terms of uh, if I want to make a film, if Sir has to uh, make a film, the first thing that comes to my mind is where do I get an investor from? Who will produce the film? And I am not talking about the government being the producer of, of uh, my films. There could be a centralized system again out of data where there are investors and there are good projects uh, that are on the uh, short list or the wish list in different languages across India and uh, there could be a central body which will match the investor and the uh, project because it should be as easy as I want to make a film uh, again uh, coming back to one of the age old questions that cinema should be given the industry status so that I can get a business loan if I want to make a uh, Film. It should be as simple as that. This is my project. I want to make a film and please give me a loan. Now this is uh, to be on the policy side, but uh, let's see how things uh, go. And uh, I sincerely believe uh, in the power of good stories. Language doesn't matter because as someone said, as we go more and more personal, we go more and more universal. Thank you. Thank you, Charudat. Uh, it was very meticulous. We have put all the points. And uh, you are a good storyteller. We could <laughs> realize that from your speech. And now I request uh, Prakash ji. Hello, hello. So, uh, thank you. Uh, I think Mr. Bhagwat has made uh, my job easier because uh, as he claimed he was an opening batsman, it's always easier for one down uh, batsman because by then uh, you realize the, the condition of the pitch. Uh, <laughs> so <clears throat> I think it was a uh, very good uh, kind of uh, overview of how uh, the technology has, has changed and uh, having worked in the archive, I can uh, see that transition happened you know, in last few years, uh, particularly in India. And it would be very educative because I, I see the audience, which is a mix of you know, uh, you know, the people who are senior citizens and young audience. The this technology has really changed fast as far as the films are concerned. Just few years back, uh, you know, the film making and the film exhibition was happening on cellulite. <coughs> Whereas in, in right from in fact, if you think of in India, 2013-14 uh, was a, a kind of a transition period where the cellulite has. Uh, given way to the digital and in today's times even in India if you go to small village the projection is happening digital so there is no cellulite uh, you know um, uh, available so and and <clears throat> this this has happened rapidly you know if you think of this from analog to digital this, this has happened so rapidly from analog it has come the magnetic media basically the VHS and the umatic tapes and then the CDs the DVDs VHS pen drives and hard disks and I don't know what is going to come uh, in next uh, few years. So the both in terms of the uh, you know the production as well as the you know consumption and exhibition uh, has gone digital. So it's a really challenge uh, in terms of uh, <coughs> uh, I believe uh, the way uh, the cinema is consumed. But at the same time uh, I believe it is a very good enabler uh, you know in terms of the uh, access and, and consumption uh, point of view. And that's why <clears throat> I think uh, this this topic is really important and timely. Uh, yes, obviously there is large topic of uh, the soft power and and, and uh, you know leveraging that soft power for the through the films is is, is very very timely because we always talk uh, India soft power in very vague terms, you know. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> the 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 the, uh, the, the soft power of which culture you know uh, plays very important uh, part of and, and that within the larger gamut of uh, culture uh, the f film film particularly has a very big role to uh, play so I congratulate uh, uh, ICCR and Prem uh, University uh, for organizing this uh, brainstorming um, session uh, because I think uh, this is a very beautiful way of you know coming together of public and private spheres and that's what also uh, you know, needed uh, to to kind of uh, realize the uh, larger good. Uh, 
Uh, yesterday and today, since many speakers uh, have shared their personal experience, let me start with my, uh, mine as well. Uh, <clears throat> in 2015, when I, I, I joined Archive, I know, and I uh, happened to attend a conference of the World Archives, which happened in, uh, in Canberra in, in Australia. There I met a young researcher from New Zealand. And, uh, uh, and when she came to know that I represented the National Film Archive of India, she immediately uh, kind of came and, and sought me. Uh, apart from, you know, uh, other things uh, on Indian cinema, she was particularly interested in a film called Saukari Pash. Now, here is a seminal silent film made in 1925 by one of India's eminent filmmaker, Baburao Painter. Now, this realistic social drama was later made in 1936 by same uh, Baburao painter, but unfortunately, both the silent and talky versions have been lost as of now. In the archiving world, uh, we have this belief that unless found, we, we don't uh, you know, uh, consider it to be permanently uh, lost. But imagine a young researcher from New Zealand trying to find more about a film which has been made many, many, more than 100 years uh, back. Now, this is a true kind of a uh, representation of reach uh, of, of uh, uh, Indian cinema. Many speakers also mentioned uh, China, uh, you know, while, while discussing the power of cinema. Yes, indeed, China has been making uh, rapid strides in terms of the technology as well as the exhibition sector. But at the same time, Indian films, and, and there were, you know, many examples but I remember very clearly because uh, this mention of, uh, uh, you know, Dangal was made and how many crores and all those things have been made. And, and Amir Khan is a huge, huge, uh, you know, hugely popular uh, uh, star there. And, uh, but is really Chinese audience aware about the best of Indian cinema? Yes, obviously, this, this particular, these films, recent films represent a, a certain genre. So what we did... Uh, as a part of uh, you know NFAI, we made a small beginning by organizing a retrospective of free few classic Indian films from different uh, uh, languages together, and this was shown at a prestigious film festival called Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon International Film Festival at Pingyao, and that was just before the pandemic uh, hit us, and that was in October 2019. Obviously, it received a good response. And what they did, and since we were talking about the, uh, the technology, what they did, obviously we had uh, subtitled the films in, in, in English, but they wanted it in Chinese language. So what they did is that they electronically projected the Chinese subtitles. So even the, when the film is being screened, uh, even below the uh, English subtitles, they projected electronically at the just uh, below the uh, sc screen. So that is a very beautiful way of, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> Uh, using the uh, such a such a using the tools of the technology basically and and I clearly remember the volunteer who was assigned uh, to me uh, when she uh, she realized I'm, I'm from India she was like you know do you know Amir Khan do you know Amir Khan and I in this particular hall you know there was when this uh, uh, you must have seen this uh, uh, this beautiful uh, uh, you know museum when it was uh, inaugurated by uh, our honorable prime minister. Uh, many, many film stars uh, had come for that inaugural function and Amir Khan was also there and I just, you know, uh, happened to click a picture with him and when I showed that picture with uh, uh, him to her, she was about to faint. So that is a power uh, of, of uh, kind of uh, cinema and, and, and how it can be possibly, uh, you know, uh, leveraged. The same year, in that same year in 2019, we also organized a major retrospective of Indian silent films. No, because we have a huge, uh, rich legacy of, of Indian silent films. And this we arranged at a place called Foundation Jerome Pathé. You know, Paris, as you know, is a capital of films you know, uh, in, across the world. And we received such a big, big uh, you know, uh, response because such a big retrospective was not organized, not, not alone in Paris, but entire Europe. And this happened after many, many uh, uh, years. And I sincerely believe that more such proactive collaborations need to be done uh, with institutions abroad, like-minded institutions, uh, which are not limited to the archives, but universities, uh, the specialty theatres and others to promote and spread awareness about this uh, rich legacy of uh, uh, Indian cinema. <coughs> 
this said awareness uh, also need to go beyond our indian diaspora you know obviously we we, we know that there would be a, a kind of a uh, audience for for our films which uh, there, there is and there are several countries where our uh, indian population has been settled for many years now they would obviously come but we should target the local population uh, too and that's what i think is very very uh, important and i think it's just not the uh, festivals but they also need to be accompanied with talks as he rightly uh, pointed out uh, uh, involving many stakeholders uh, from the industry uh, you know so that you know uh, there is a value addition to the entire uh, you know uh, uh, experience and and i think this this believe this i believe that you know this value addition uh, is 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 very essential to the entire package and really help in familiarizing the audience with our own uh, you know indian uh, culture another important aspect uh, is is proper marketing you know uh, having worked with and collaborating with several institutions abroad i i realize now that they they plan it so well in advance you know their their calendar of activities is is almost ready uh, one year two year in advance and, and that is the way i think uh, the entire uh, event and entire festival uh, is, is is planned and i think we should learn and 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 do it and and i'm i'm sure the iccr is is really well placed because we have uh, in front of us the examples of uh, uh, you know uh, alliance france and goethe institute the way uh, they they organize various events not only through the film but also the other uh, areas of uh, art and, and 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 culture i think in addition to uh, leveraging the technology to create and provide the content the stress also should be the type of content being provided i think uh, Uh, with the emergence of ott and video on demand services it should not just focus on on the uh, classics or known films but also it should have the you know proper curated content featuring indian films from the past few decades and 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 which possibly are not very uh, known or much not much talked about and and i think this this access uh, to to uh, diverse films uh, uh, you know across languages and eras uh should be made available so that we can cultivate the deeper appreciation of indian cinema because we have had a rich legacy uh, there are masters of uh, indian cinema who have made such a fantastic uh, you know films and, and we, i think we should we should uh, uh, you know cater to not only the uh, you know uh, only the film enthusiasts and cinephiles but also to the general uh, you know, public and i think this all these of this should be supplemented through a proper curation that's what uh, you know i i i really emphasize because in the today's age of uh, algorithms here briefly touch up on this particular aspect curation is a highly specialized uh, you know skill and 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 it it it, it helps in in the content uh, you know standing out from because you know in the digital era there is this is a this is a plethora of content being bombarded from everywhere and and uh, curation can can really help out in reaching to the, the uh you know uh, target audience you have a very beautiful example of movie and the criterion channel uh, in front of us how they are curating uh, the content and reaching worldwide and and can something be uh, something like this be thought about for the indian our own indian uh, content yes i think with large number of uh, films indian films both feature and non feature are now are being digitized and i can i can tell you with pride that you know Uh, a very very good initiative of ministry of information and broadcasting called national film heritage mission uh, you know where we are going to digitize more than 5000 films you know both feature and uh, non feature uh, put together and and that's what this uh, that debate about the analog and digital analog is good from the archiving point of view but from the access point of view digital is the key because the content is being uh, you know consumed in a digital way and and that's why i think it is very much possible that huge cinematic the heritage of india can certainly be made available to audiences across the world and and we intend to have after this project is over there can be a portal you know where all these films can be made available available to uh, to the you know proper audience through through user id and password i think uh, with the rise of technological advancement in cinema like vfx and animation you know i think indian films are engaging with foreign production houses who in turn are also expanding their base in india but in, a, in order to increase our potential we need to also train our professionals you know uh, at par with international standards and and that is also another 
uh, area I think we should focus because instead of just creating operators, we need to inculcate the germs of creativity in them. Technology just is a merely medium. But uh, you know, our professionals need to be using it creatively and need to know the know-how of that particular uh, you know, trade. I think while talking about the new and emerging marketing and distribution channels which can be used and employed creatively to promote uh, Indian cinema abroad, I, I feel we must also give impetus to the co-production. You know, uh, we, we, as of now, uh, India as a country, we do have uh, several such uh, co-production agreements with many countries. Uh, you know, I think that gives us more budget, you know, that gives us better scripts, that gives us you know, uh, you know what are the best practices being followed, uh, both in terms of the technology and 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 otherwise. I think uh, uh, you know this will really flourish. Uh, the uh, already we have our you know uh, the narrative is, is really our rich, but I think this will enrich uh, uh, further the way of uh, storytelling. And uh, rightly, there was a mention made of uh, you know Chaitanya Tamani's the way it was it was done uh, for his second film. And I think this will really help in, you know, developing the visual language also. Uh, obviously, by distributing films on the international uh, territory on OTT uh, and cinemas, uh, you know, so that international audience also would be, you know, uh, watching. There was a mention of off and uh, always this subtitling, and I also kind of, uh, I think this really plays a huge role in in in, in uh, outreach of the films. This applies not only the. Uh, new film, but also the older ones. And what we have done is that while we are digitizing uh, our own content through this uh, huge, uh, you know, digitization project, we are also translating it and, and subtitling it in different languages. So, and, and today's technology enables us, you know, if you are viewing it on a, on a on a digital medium, it is not only limited to English. It could be any other language. And at a click of button, you can simultaneously uh, translate uh, this into multiple, uh, you know, uh, language. And so that an option can be provided to the you know uh, these these audience uh, to to watch it in their preferred uh, you know uh, language. At the same time, we must also remember that after you know Parasite's success in 2019, subtitle is not at all a barrier also uh, at all at all if, if, if anymore because it, it all boils down uh, to the quality of content and how it is being uh, sold to the audience international audience. The maxim of content being uh, king is a, is a truth one must bear in mind all the time. When the content is rooted in soil, and, and there was, you know, various uh, speakers mentioned it, uh, you know, then the local becomes universal, uh, you know, uh, and, and because after all, you know, this, uh, you know cinema is a, is a, is a uh, uh, telling of stories and all emotions are same everywhere. For that to happen, you know, the stories being told have to have a solid cultural foundation. and, and Obviously, we have a very rich and diverse cultural heritage uh, from which uh, our filmmakers can draw the inspiration. And this is true from uh, you know initial days of uh, our industry. And I, I, I can cite one uh, you know anecdote. Uh, in, in 1940, uh, Pune-based Prabhat Film Studio you know came up with you know another same film called Sant Daneshwar. You know, after this was after this 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 was this came after Sant Tukaram was made. You know, this was made in two languages, Marathi and Hindi. And obviously, uh, directed again by uh, Damli and Fatilal, uh, you know, the makers of iconic Santukaram. This is a, a biopic on a young man who was instrumental in starting a spiritual movement of bhakti in uh, 20th century Maharashtra. And it was obviously, it turned out to be all time classic. It was a simple yet sincere film made in the true Prabhat tradition. Now, renowned, uh, you know, American filmmaker Fram uh, Capra. When he saw that film, he liked it so much that he said he was surprised to find that such a technically well-made film could be produced in Pune, a smaller town than a well-established Bombay industry. So we have a, such a rich, uh, you know, uh, tradition of, of drawing from our own, you know, Indian uh, Indian culture. Now, uh, you know, coming to the specific points when we talk about the outreach of films, you know, I think we should also engage into some kind of a sample audience outreach, you know, sample audience, uh, you know, survey, you know, that's, that's, that need to be done to know about the, what kind of platforms and avenues are available in countries, uh, you know, uh, because there are, there will be preferences, there would be various media, uh, there will be various OTTs and, and, and it, it, it varies in different sectors. I think the findings of such a research will help in curating 
specific packages for countries that are outside of our traditional distributor chain. I think that is also uh, and, and very crucial. And here, I think our Indian embassies and consulates, apart from the vast network of ICCR cultural centers, uh, can play a very important uh, role in facilitating uh, this. Uh, the, the film distri distribution, uh, he, he, uh, uh, I think, briefly touched upon. Uh, uh, you know, it's rightly at present is an unorganized, uh, you know, sector, and there is a need to explore. You know, some kind of a policy, you know, uh, building measures need to be catered so that you know our, uh, you know, on, on categories like rural, semi-rural, uh, semi-rural, urban, depending on the market we are uh, catering to, which in turn can help in. Uh, to know the, the kind of technologies which are more relevant to which market while distributing uh, the films. Uh, in terms of the perspectives on technology and public policy to foster the learning and dissemination of Indian cinema, I think the policy design also catered to the technologies archaeology, you know, uh, because as, as we are transitioning from one uh, uh, technology to an, another technology, we should also make the new generation aware about the older technologies and, and that is also crucial I uh, know coming from the archiving uh, background because this is a major way of archiving and therefore preservation can thrive and sustain on a long term uh, basis. I think this also can be done by introducing well designed educational courses by emphasizing on aesthetical narrative and technical knowledge theory as well as practicals and this is also I think uh, you know it could be blockchain technologies you know blockchain technologies uh, NFTs and and can be definitely explored for for such you know, uh, you know to promote and distribute uh, the the, the uh, channel. Now coming to the strategic design for organizing various events of Indian cinema uh, worldwide and using these events as a as fountainheads for mobilizing consciousness. Uh, I think uh, you know I can cite another examples. Uh, you know, few years back I got an opportunity to attend a seminar on how technology can specifically leverage to promote the culture. And this was organized by Google Art and Culture. I don't know how many of you have heard this very specific platform of Google, uh, you know, uh, which is a very innovative platform. And what they have done is that they have <coughs> uh, this particular platform, and I would urge if you are not visited to please do so, which is a very beautiful example of using the latest tool of technology to bring art and culture on your smartphones and computers. What they have done is that leading museums and art galleries across the world have presented a slice of their collection on this particular platform and visitor is then induced to visit these museums physically later on. <coughs> and, and whenever they get a chance to visit that particular city, uh, you know, then they would be obviously inclined to visit that particular, uh, you know, uh, uh, museum or art gallery. Just yesterday, our Honorable Prime Minister uh, you know, who is on a foreign visit, uh, you know, uh, you know, urged the Indians who are settled there uh, to, to encourage at least five foreign, foreign citizens to visit India. Now, this is, a, I think, a very beautiful and excellent way of uh, outreach. But when these tourists come to India, are, what are we supposed to showcase and how? You know, and that's why I think the tools of uh, technology uh, can come handy because it is estimated that about 30 to 40 percent of tourists who travel worldwide, they are artistically inclined. So they would they would plan their visit to visit such art galleries or now museum like Indian Cinema Museum. So this is a there is a there is a budget there is a finance uh, uh, you know involved, and I think we must gear to gear up to make that visit an engaging one, uh, so that they can take back an Indian uh, experience. Uh, you know, again, and I recall an, an event we uh, NFA, at an NFA I successfully organized in a small city called Lugano in Switzerland. Now, this was a very, uh, very well curated festival of Indian films, both feature and non-feature, based on a broad theme of art and culture. You know, only specific films, uh, you know, which are based on art and culture. You know, it was organized at a newly built Lugano Art Center, and this is a town close to Locarno, where. Uh, where an international, prestigious international festival is held, and this city is also close to the Ita Italian border. But apart from the festival, what this center also organized was a very beautiful exhibition on how Indian art has influenced the West. And, and, and what they did is what, apart from this particular festival, they organized a three month old exhibition. You know, this, that exhibition was to be there for three months 
and and uh, you know uh, so apart from exhibitions post exhibitions screening of films you know and all the major art forms painting sculpture you know all, all the other forms were 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 kept there so that you know anyone who is visiting that particular uh, place they would go back with that entire you know uh, experience and I, i believe that such a such a approach where where integrated uh, you know approach interdisciplinary approach uh, you know while showcasing uh, indian culture is 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 much much uh, uh, crucial uh, somebody mentioned about the you know uh, in, in the morning lecture about the you know film studies you know film studies as a separate discipline has now emerged you know many universities across the world uh, have have started their own you know uh, own department of, of of film studies and many of the leading universities also you know are now focusing on indian cinema particular and 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 there are there is a really renewed interest uh, uh, on on this particular aspect so i think this is a new arena we must focus on so that we can uh, possibly leverage uh, you know uh, uh, through 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 this particular uh, you know uh, institutions and 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 uh, and university because you are you are directly reaching the younger audience uh, you know in this particular uh, instance now regarding the consumption of content uh, that is now taking place in a variety of ways including the internet smartphone smart smartphone uh, the new ways of emerging uh, engaging audiences uh, are are are, are uh, emerging and i think majority of our indian cinema is is already doing it what we are not doing is 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 presenting in a good way because the staff you know which are working behind the scenes uh, on all these technologies are, is is you know there is a need to train them Uh, and 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 uh, you know tech, because the technologies are changing so fast but our 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 core working force uh, you know uh, is not getting adapted to that and and there's a perfect example of the quality difference between the content on netflix and other ott channel you know uh, so when netflix came in india what they did was you know they they organized a, you know you know series of workshops you know they conducted a series of workshops Uh, with 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 post production houses and cinematographers and executive uh, producers to educate them about the current and emerging technologies their quality control department is so strong uh, you know and contrary to that the other ott platforms which which have no technical standards you know the apps don't don't work properly uh, you know so there is no proper guidelines and that's why i think we we need to uh, really uh, uh, work on uh, coming to the last i think again i would uh, share another uh, instance, instance of a beautiful collaboration uh, while we did at uh, at uh, nfi uh, in in uh, 2018 uh, there was a festival of bricks audio visual forum and this was a forum of uh, in, which was held in brazil and this is a forum of uh, you know archival institutions of bricks uh, countries brazil russia uh, china uh, and so so this was a, this was a, so what we did was we presented a select few indian films from uh, uh, nfi collection but but since this event was held at a public university what we also did was you know because the young, again the audience was young students so apart from the films being shown there was a short course on history of indian cinema and 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 this was delivered by a noted cinema scholar called ashish rajadeksh and this was received very well so again coming to that integrative approach to to so this was a very good you uh, know value addition uh, to to showcase the rich and diversity of indian cinema in a comprehensive uh, manner so i think there are beautiful and abundant uh, possibilities as far as showcasing of indian culture in general and indian cinema in particular uh, i think this this uh, i i again must again uh, thank uh, vinay ji because i remember distinctly uh, just before the lockdown he had met me and broach this uh, particular idea of having a seminar on this particular topic uh, and and he really pursued it and that's what we are sitting here today so i once again thank uh, iccr and and flame uh, university also for inviting me to present my thoughts and i believe this seminar and the topics discussed so far would provide some concrete ideas uh, so that that can be taken forward and become a part of policy document thank you thank you thank you prakash ji Uh, you have taken an excellent overview of the topic, and generally, whenever we meet bureaucrats, we get more depression. After meeting Prakash ji, we get more uh, encouragement. I I always have experience whenever we meet him. We never feel that we are meeting bureaucrat, but we are meeting the art lover. 
that is Prakash Magdumji. Thank you so much for being with us. And uh, now uh, our chairperson for this seminar, uh, Krishna Madhavan. No, no. First he is going to present and then we uh, na Namaskar, Banakkam. Uh, first and foremost, I have to say that uh, this is something that I have not done before. So, pardon me, I what I'll do my very best to present myself. Uh, the two panelists have given such concrete, comprehensive uh, understanding both uh, of where we stand, what's going on, etc. So, But both of them started something with talking about their personal story and their engagement growing up with cinema. So, as, this, as both of them were giving their uh, views, I had to reset myself. So, I said, let me tell you some other story. So, uh, so this whole idea of, uh, uh, let me just begin um, somewhere in 1996, okay, and I'm just giving you how I got triggered into being, doing what I'm doing currently. So, and then I will share some experiences and then I will show you something, okay. So, um, I come from a family where my father was a part of the freedom struggle. And uh, to, you know, growing up with a Gandhian at home, you know, and I was in a generation at that time, like how Shekhar Kapoor said, okay, getting into Levi's and Pepsi and what is MTV is so cool, okay, and being in advertising, you think well, you're very happy, okay. And uh, uh, I was coming from Madras in those days, so coming to Mumbai and, you know, and traveling all over was very exciting. So uh, by the time I was actually very successful in advertising. So, one day my father sat me down and he said, you're creating, uh, Bala, you're creating big ideas for products. You're creating an idea where you create an emotion for a product, like a tire or anything. And you're creating an emotion and in, in a way that the consumer gets an empathy for it and he buys into that emotion. He said, can you create an idea for India? Can you create an idea that can inspire uh, the entire new generation? Create an idea that can create a new fervor among young Indians. And then he showed me his thighs and said, see, these marks, whenever we used to sing Mande Matram, we used to get beaten up. But leave that Mande Matram out. It served a purpose for the freedom struggle. Can you find a new purpose for Mande Matram? Can you find a new fervor that will inspire this young generation? And that was the brief. So that evening, I stopped doing advertising and said, I'm going to dedicate myself to creating a big idea called Vande Matra. Not knowing what I'm going to get into it. But an idea, let's use the potential of creativity and create some big idea in a very new way. So, Obviously, uh, the first thing I ever did was I went to a famous artist over there in South of India called Tota Tarani. And I asked him, give me a new expression for the flag of India. Because I have to find the fervor in the flag. And I gave him what my father said. And then he called me next morning and he showed me a six foot painting. That whole night he had painted beautifully. I took that scanned that, put it in, I know we have to have CD box, I put it in the jewel box, scanned it, and I put A.R. Rahman, Mande Matram, and I went to my friend. He, Rahman and I are schoolmates and friends for, from school. He have done more than about 100 odd commercials with him. He has done jingles for me before he did Roja. So I went and showed him, said, you are only for film. We do something too. So that's how we created the first album, Mande Matra. And uh, then the whole idea was, let's think different. Okay. And uh, Mande Matra, first thing I said is, if there was a, if I was doing a commercial for Pepsi, what would I do? I should do better than that for India. The first thing I said, 
what is my idea? What is my product? What is my brand? Flag. A painting here. Then I went to London. In those days, there was no high speed camera here. So Photosonic was available only in London. So I need to do a thousand frame shots. Whereas if I want to open up a, and get the fizz of a Pepsi, I'll be in London. So I said, I will go and take a shot of the flag in London. We went to London and made a six feet flag, oh no, a big flag with the flag, royal flag maker and filmed in Photosonic a massive flag, like a sea of wave. So that when you see it, you should drool about it. How do you feel an emotion for it? So that, I said, will be a part of everything I do on Bande Matra. So like that, it was not just about one song, Matu Jai Salam. Okay? Even there, uh, I told Rahman, boss, it's not that to karega to main gana le lunga aur hum kar lenge. I had to challenge Rahman. I said, uh, so what was the song? Like even at sound mixing level. So first of all, uh, we said, let's go and to the best studio uh, and record it. So I went, we went to London and we got a lot of musicians in there and recorded in the best of studios there. So the whole idea was like saying, hey, wh when we listen to a sound mix, we present, we put uh, the Michael Jackson song, all I want to say is they don't really care about us. And we sing it, you hear every aspect of it. I said, once we mix Vande Matram, let's see whether we get it. And we got it. So the idea was, why should we be any less? So use all the best thing. And interestingly, uh, we had to film this Vande Matram, Matu Jai Salam across India. Okay? So obviously, Santosh Shivan was my best buddy at that time. So I said, Santosh ke saath karun kya na? I said, kya hai ki, when we take an Indian DOP, I'm just saying, please for, pardon me, I, they're all my friends. But if I take him to a village, okay, and I'm taking real people, they're not glamorizing or bringing out the beauty of their emotion. They feel like, yaar, ye ganda hai, isko aur kuch saaf kar dete hai. Ye isko ye kar dete hai. So I said, nahi. So I got a British DOP. Suddenly, and I said British DOP, and I said, I want to get certain lenses at that time that were not available. And I said, let's go. So have a new eye to look at things. 25 years now, look at, you can till today look at Matu Jai Salam, and you'll get the same emotion. And today's kid is getting the same emotion what a kid at that time got. So move forward. So a lot of opportunities. So Vande Matram was not just one Matu Jai Salam. India per se, and you know, even now, is not a country that enjoys and celebrates audiences, non-fiction. So I wanted to bring, you know, tell stories of India. So I said, advertising se around, ek minute mein banayin. 30 second commercial karte, ek minute mein banayin. So I made 200 one minute films on India. Okay. And then we gave it to all the satellite channels and Doordarshan and made it in all languages. Imagine the amount of humatic tapes we distributed all across this country. In 100 days, for the 50th year of India's independence, every 10 minutes you go to any channel, you'll find a Vande Matra. So subconsciously, it connected deeply and stayed with me. So it's just not one song of Vande Matra, it was many things that came together. So move forward. Uh, after that, one day we were sitting and then we wanted to look for some Janagana Mana. Anything was one old scratchy sound. Okay. So we said, listen, we are a country of classical music, great singers, great musicians. Why don't we have a musical production of the national anthem? So we said, take it, So we went and recorded with 50 artists of the time, from Bhim Sen Joshi to Lata Mangeshkar to DK Patamal to Bhupen Hazarika, to you name everybody, both vocal, instrumental, everything, and made a book, uh, a CD of 50 renditions, and, uh, and made the films also. These are treasures for India. And the, what is this too? It's all about, it's not like a national anthem, a patriotic, hai. no. It's all about creativity. I see it as creativity. You should give me, the whole idea is, give me the most boring subject, can we make it the most inspiring emotion? 
And that's how transformation and impact can be created. We are talking about influences to audiences. Any subject, you have to find and create an angle to deliver that. So anyway, so move forward, Janagana Manami Hogya, then Incredible India. Like that, for example, Abhi, uh, so, government of India at that time said, we are spending thousands of crores, but the girl child is dropping, you know, from rural India. They are not going to school. So, can you come up with an idea or a catalyst or a creative thought? So, we went to the rural part of India and asked the children, why do you go to school? They said, we go to school to meet our friends. So, we made a So, we made a film just showing, nahi likhenge, padhenge, wo sab nahi. just hanging out with friends but going to school. And that we filmed from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from every rural part of India. And we made a song called School Chalega. Most important mission for the government. So I knocked at the door of the Prime Minister and Atal Ji Bola, Sir, you have to give the foreword. The next day I went. So he said, कुछ कविता मैंने भी लिखी है आप दिस सुन लीजिए अगर काम आएगा तो रख दीजिए राइसर ओके तो उन्होंने बोला सवेरा हो गया है चिड़िया घोंसलों से निकल रही है बच्चे स्कूल जा रहे हैं चलो स्कूल चले हम चलो स्कूल चले हम एंड दैट्स इट आई रिकॉर्डेड इट आई फिल्म्ड विथ हिम एंड आई पुट द सॉन्ग देन आफ्टर दैट आई सेड हे दिस इज द इरा ऑफ where we have Atal ji as a Prime Minister, an inspiring statesman, and then we, uh, another person who is like a pipe piper for all the children is our President at that time, Dr. Abdul Kalam. So we knocked at him and went and met him and said, uh, you know, this is the film and, you know, we got the Prime Minister. So he says, so what do you want me to do? He spoke to me in Tamil, in the Sarpan, no? Okay. So I said, uh, so he said, let me give. Let me take, let's bring the children and we'll do a creative pledge. So I got the children and he took a creative pledge and we made the film. So it's all about how you take an idea and how you maximize the idea for impact, for audience and for timelessness. Film is a piece of labor, of love, art, creativity. It has to stay forever. So how do you create that? Then the next thing, kya kya uske baad, uh, let me come to present now. Okay. Yes. Everybody has laid out what the opportunities are and how today there is nothing as NRI audience or foreign audience. They are audience, period. Whatever you say, either I like a movie or I don't like a movie. It's as simple as that. So now I'm not getting into the cinema space. I don't have an Amir Khan, I don't have a Dangal. But by Socha, there is a huge space of opportunities of stories of India that can be done. So about three, four years ago, I said, let's create a big idea for a legacy project for India. And having traveled and seen, and I'm still inspired and fired to go and do something. So he said, let's create uncovering untold stories of India. And each very high production value and under 10 minutes. So let's reach this audience maximize this audience and uh, today thanks to the democratization of the net it's uh, accessible and it's so uh, economically available to all sections of the people we just have to create good content and that's it so we started saying we'll create stories of india and create a virtual museum on the cloud let's create 1000 stories of india and put them on the cloud from every nook and corner, we had curated 300 stories, well researched. We have already, as on date, we have completed filming 100 films. And in that proof of concept, we have 20 films. Uh, we put it on YouTube. 
and we got almost nearly about 150 odd million views of cumulative. So now, before I just show you one film, interesting that when the Prime Minister came to open the museum over here, he appealed to the people, to your all big filmmakers, he said, chote chote film ne kya karu? And he said, aaj kal hum Padma Awards, such unknown, uh, you know, he heroes ko de ne, make some stories, usme se people will get inspired. Now I'll show you something. Can we play the film one and dim the lights, please? की मट्टी से उगा हुआ ये आदिवासी कवि कोसीली जबान में लिखता है उसके जबान का नाम है कोसीली 2016 में इसे पद्मश्री अवार्ड से नवाजा गया था सम्मानित किया गया था ये कवि जब अपने गांव की जमीन पर चलता है तो लगता है ये पूरे ग्लोब पर चल रहा है और जो खुद से कहता है वो यही लगता है कि वो इस ग्लोब पर बसे हर इंसान से बात कर रहा है और वो कहता है खुद से कहता है समंदर से निथारी मां की छाती से बही अमृत की बोंद कवि के कलम पर उतरी है मैं तुम्हें खत लिख रहा हूं भादार मैं तुम्हें खत लिख रहा हूं भादार चिठी दो छेरे हाल धार, चिठी दो छेरे हाल धार, दुख भर दौर पिलाती टकरो कोविता जोनों में कोर, चिठी दो छेरे हाल धार, चिठी दो छेरे हाल धार के सुधि कर्बो वाले पहले तू हो सोच और हाथ धरे हिचुल वाले आगे चढ़ती पाऊँच 
इलुबुलुबुनिया सोसार के देखी लालस थी नहीं बोर चिठी दो छेरे होल थोर चिठी दो छेरे होल थोर सुस्तिर सिखा मनुष्य जैक उन्हा होई हुए थोड़े सुस्तिर सिखा मनुष्य जैक उन्हा होई हुए थोड़े अपना सुख सोल धार लगी पौर के मार के कोंदे धर्म कर्म सर्म के छाड़ी बाट धोई नरको चिठी दो छेरे होल थोर चिठी दो छेरे होल थोर भागु सुख बोली मार गाली के आशीर्वाद, दुख के भागु सुख बोली मार गाली के आशीर्वाद, जहीं भी स्थाई उम्र तो चे दूर है उनमा, आपे भी स्थाई उम्र दुबार, गोंगा पोचे मुने धौर, चिटी दो छेरे होल धौर, चिटी दो छेरे होल धौर समाज के कोर संपूर्ण निजोर मधुर वचन को ही जगत जकोर कोर उठे घर से कुट में अचूर होगी बारू पर जो ते कोलो मर गया ने समाज सोलो को चिठी दो छेरे हो को चिठी दो छेरे हो को चिठी दो छेरे हो So I just, uh, this is just a one film, but yeah, if you get the opportunity, please go to YouTube and watch on Virtual Bharat. You will find many such stories from Maharashtra to Kerala to Tamil Nadu to Punjab. So, so I will look forward to your news and uh, you know hearing from you. So basically, each of these films are made in their original language. So what happens is, if I try to say, okay, for a different audience, let me dub it in English, let me put it, I lose the originality. But today, people are comfortable. Technology allows you to put subtitles in the language. So we do put provide subtitles in all the Indian languages plus some foreign languages. So we have to have our originality and there is an honesty in the idea. If that comes, you will influence, you will impact the audience. So that is very critical. So, Baki sab baat kiya hua hai. There are a lot of things over the last two days. They've all been shared. But somewhere, 
you know, in spite of all the technology, in spite of all of that, what we need is true stories, good content, originality. So what we, if we present our originality, and that's what the world is looking for us. You know, they're not looking for us to make a Chinese film or a Hollywood film and give it back to them. So we need to have a sense of pride to tell the story of Haldar Nath or tell any other stories like that. So if we can, now for example, uh, lastly I would say that uh, the next film I wanted to share, but we're running out of time, but you please watch it. It's called Ram Nami. From the Ram Nami film onwards, we're doing it in Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. So we will give cutting edge. We will be in par with any of those uh, modern films that you'll watch. But let's give it to the stories that are from the remote. And let's non-fiction and documentary films get the technology it deserves rather than only some mainstream <laughs> film which has excess of money. You know, so it, anyway, thank you so much. And thank you for the panelists. And uh, over to you, sir. Thank you. Ah, okay. Uh, just uh, uh, I'll share with you. Again, every time there is an opportunity. So when COVID happened and uh, they, when the Prime Minister said on March 24th that India is in lockdown, okay. So, you know, everywhere else we see, we have seen in the past, history has shown us that European and American documentary filmmakers document everything, whether it's a tragedy, war, whatever is happening. I said, this time, we have to do it. We can't be looking at footage of what Prague looks or what Berlin looks or what London looks. Let's show what India looks. So for the next uh, nine weeks, across 16 states, we said, we'll make the film later. But pehle document karte. So from Hazrat Bal in Kashmir to Gauhati to Kanyakumari tak, 16 states, we have filmed what is a silent, empty India looks like. We filmed Mughal Sarai where there is no train at all. We have seen, we have filmed a CST station, VT station, a kabutar bhi nita. And we filmed the Ganges in uh, both in Haridwar, Rishikesh. You can see transparent inside. It was so clean. So these footages we have documented. Both COVID, COVID bola hai. So we just released one four minute uh, film last year it's called Utenge Hum and otherwise we're coming out of the full-fledged documentary we thought let it let it take some more time and people move away from COVID we should present a well-documented story of India of what this country went through a silent India of a billion people thank you well we don't have the time now so we'll nay, 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 nay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It includes entire Bharat. So, sir, uh, it was really mesmerizing uh, session. And I thank Prakash ji, Bharat Balaji, and Charudar. Now, uh, we are uh, going for the... Uh, we are yeah, very little function, but before that, I would like to request uh, Pasumati ji to felicitate our uh, dignitaries. So, Pasumati ji, please present it for Bharatva Bharat Balaji. Prakash Magdum ji. Bharatwala ji, please, you present it to Prakash ji and to Chandra. Thank you so much, sir. And in a couple of minutes, we are starting the veredictory function. Actually, there is no question, it's just a suggestion. Yesterday, uh, Rupa ji has, has said that there is a mindset that films create in everyone. They create characters. Now, uh, when we see filmmakers, most of the filmmakers either they belong to a film family or they come by chance. 
just by their own. Why can't we have a cinema education night from six onwards? Class six also that we uh, expose uh, students uh, for good cinema, Indian cinema. So by the time they come to graduation to take a film study, they are, their mind is set and they can make good. good. Thank you. So, uh, warm good evening again. Uh, like they say, uh, it is not over until it is over. So, uh, this is the, the so welcome uh, everyone to this. Uh, uh, welcome everyone to the valedictory session, um, concluding program um, of uh, absolutely brilliant, uh, insightful, uh, at some level even tiring, might I add, uh, two days of uh, continuous engagement on the theme of uh, Indian cinema and soft power. Um, I thank all of you to be here, um, who have uh, sustained these conversations for two days and I think uh, they of course uh, call for deeper and longer engagement. I will very quickly uh, uh, sort of try to, in fact I don't want to even uh, claim to be reporting uh, what the sessions uh, included because there's going to be a detail that will come forward later as we will discuss. Uh, but I think if I were to really sum up the conversations uh, that took place in the last two days, um, three things stand out. The first is uh, the idea that we started with and also ended with, uh, the idea of stories and how central stories are uh, to all of us. In fact, I don't know if, uh, if you, you all noticed, but uh, interestingly, Indian panels of this type often have speakers talking about the idea through their own stories. And that itself, so I've seen that this is a very uniquely Indian thing, that we use our own experiences to explain something deeply theoretical and actually, it makes a lot more sense. So if, if everyone, so for instance, Rupati, I remember, was telling about her own childhood stories. And that has stuck really for a longer time, right? Uh, we, are, we are a land of stories. Uh, and so that is definitely one of the things that came out. We started with Ramayana and Mahabharata. We are ending with, with stories that Bharat Balaji showed us. Um, we started with, in fact, uh, the Honorable Governor mentioned about the diplomacy of silence. Uh, there's a lot of diplomacy of war, but there, there needs to be a diplomacy of silence. And we ended with the conversation on COVID. Uh, four minute movie on silence by Barbala. So it's kind of, kind of coming to full circle. But story is one aspect. The second aspect that really came out um, is that there is a huge amount of cultural capital that India has, uh, which requires uh, to be in one way unlocked. I mean, it's already getting unlocked, but in a sustained, inter sustained systematic manner. The expansive uh, brilliance of the cultural capital, I think, remains uh, much, leaves much to be desired. And that is, uh, that is one of the goals of the conversation anyway, in terms of how do we do that. And the third thing, I think, which is, of course, food for thought, is that government, uh, there is a role for the government here. Uh, there is obviously the many ideas are floated. Um, but in one way or the other, um, through the engagement of governments, through the engagement of universities, through the engagements of, of course, filmmakers and other stakeholders, the idea of soft power, Indian cinema and soft power, the discourse that we've started, in, in, like I mentioned earlier, I think this is the first time that this discourse is being discussed systematically, formally like this. Uh, hopefully, it's going to continue. Continue. I have to, uh, you know, um, some of the some of the important insights that kind of reverberate throughout, uh, you know, our, our minds in the last two days. Um, Shekhar Kapoorji spoke about the type of investments uh, in China that they make. Um, you know, uh, Honorable Governor uh, mentioned um, about about all kinds of other aspects of soft power in addition to cinema as well, including yoga. Uh, these re these remain with us uh, from, from yesterday. Uh, from the from the same um, um, from the same uh, day, the first session engaged in all kinds of interesting ideas about the Western narratives that um, that color the way in which uh, you know the lens that we use, Oriental or, col or colonial lens that we use in movies. And this is not just an Indian situation. Globally, uh, you know, the, the global South, so to speak, uh, is often portrayed in a certain lens um, which um, the West wants wants to to see it in. Uh, and it kind of keeps on uh, becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. You tell them more and more about that you are a snake charmer, you are a snake charmer, and you then actually end up becoming a snake charmer, sh showing yourself as a snake charmer, things like that. But interestingly, in this session, we had uh, Subhash Gaiji talking about the sort of, uh, sort of change that has happened since the 1980s to late 90s when he really started. So that was kind of an interesting story that I thought came about. Um, you know, um, 
followers of Indian cinema across. Um, we also realize that we make several times, uh, three times uh, movies in India than in Hollywood or in the US. Uh, we also realized that we make movies in India in more than 50 languages. Uh, this is something that continued until the last session, uh, the, se uh, the session yesterday. In the second session, Idea of India, um, we discussed the idea of India itself. And I think that was an interesting session in many ways. Uh, Rupa Ji is here. She, she mentioned about the various stereotypes that uh, many uh, you know, mainstream movies have continued to portray about, uh, about Punjabis and Bengalis for that matter or, or even otherwise. Um, but also there were many other ideas that were proposed. Uh, Rupa Ji mentioned about the corpus fund that is needed for instance. Um, there were other, uh, you know, Deepak Ji talked about these, these same issues. Uh, Emo Singh Ji talked about the lens uh, that we use in order to explain our, uh, you know, the way that we make the movies. And of course, I mentioned about Subhash Bhai Ji. Uh, in the second session, uh, in addition, Rupa Ji, Anand Vijay Ji mentioned about the idea of India. Neela Madha Panda's uh, insights were, uh, were very, very interesting. And uh, Ashok Rane Ji, of course, uh, told us about how many times um, the, you know, the people in the, the stakeholders in these, in these uh, government positions have to be very important. Um, Aruna Raja Patil ji chaired that session very, very effectively. I think uh, both her opening remarks and concluding remarks uh, were deeply insightful. The session on music, I think all of us remember that. Uh, we remember Mandarji, Mandarji's uh, vibrant presentation, including some of the suggestions that he came, came with. Uh, for instance, the sound appreciation courses for that matter, how the, the world of mu uh, music is changing. We discussed uh, uh, cautiously Namdarji's uh, you know, uh, points of view, how non-linear narratives and stories are told in India using music. Uh, Vaishali Samanji also gave some very, very interesting ideas. In particular, uh, the use or the need for a publishing house in India which exists, uh, which doesn't exist in India but does exist in the, world, um, you know, in the West, so to sort of in a way formalize it. And how the, there are different kinds of collaborations that universities and government bodies can, co can create for, uh, collaborations between Indian and non-Indian uh, artists. Um, Samirji, of course, gave a very uh, emotional speech about the different type of things that the government uh, can do and is doing. Um, the, we ended the day with Amrish Mishraji's uh, heartfelt and uh, heart-touching uh, tribute to Lataji. Uh, and I think uh, many of you were there uh, to witness it. This morning, of course, uh, we had uh, GP Vijay Kumar ji, Shashi Giran ji, Santosh ji, um, and uh, Pavitra Margarita ji. Pavitra ji, in particular, proposed a number of ideas that are already being implemented in policy space in Assam. Um, and uh, sort of it's a call for many other states and, and uh, you know, spaces, policy spaces to begin thinking about uh, this idea of uh, ease of filming. In fact, I must mention here, uh, late, I think November last year, the government of India um, has begun, uh, to begun discussing the idea of a model policy for films in India. Um, so there are around 14 states who have a film policy in place. And now this policy is not about the content, this policy is about how do you make it easy for filmmakers. Uh, to make films. Uh, like ease of doing business, this is ease of film, right? Um, and so the government is interested in um, coming up with a model film policy that, that covers the entire country and I think this conversation that we are, that we are having will feed into that, hopefully. We're going to engage with the, with the government, uh, and, you know, uh, over time. Utpal Dattaji, of course, gave a lovely uh, conclusion to that. Uh, the previous session, um, I don't need to mention this, this is really fresh in our memory, um, Balaji's presentation, but in addition, uh, our uh, 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 again, his own personal journey through it, um, and Prakashji's uh, Prakash um, I think they have been very, very insightful uh, two days. Um, I will uh, now uh, invite uh, the president of ICCR, uh, Dr. Vanessa Sabudiji, uh, to give his concluding remarks, uh, after which uh, we also have, uh, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the minister uh, could not join us, um, and so is the case with uh, Vala Bansali ji. But the minister has kindly sent his uh, video recording, which we will play. Um, after Venerji speaks, uh, so I will invite uh, President ICCR to give his few words. Thank you, Yugank, and thanks everybody for uh, joining this seminar and being here uh, right up to the end of the seminar. Just uh, for the record's sake, I'm asking those who have not registered but who are present over here, if you could raise your hands because we would like to know who are the newcomers here. Those who have not registered, but they are here, okay. Anybody else? All, all, all of you have registered, looks like, most of you. So those who have not registered, please uh, give us your contact details so that you become a part of this community of uh, film lovers uh, and who would like films to be playing the role of a soft power vehicle as is the objective behind. 
so as it happens, uh, while I am definitely going to uh, talk about the road ahead, but before that, since uh, most of our sessions we were short of time and in the last session we could not get really speaking some kind of a discussion happening. So by the time the video message and at times it so happens that the virtual things also take a little time. So the video is being downloaded, it will take some 10 minutes at least, it's a heavy file. So we will utilize that window in a more constructive manner and therefore if you have any suggestions about the road ahead because as is very clear, the basic objective behind the first of its kind seminar was to look at Indian cinema at soft power and to strengthen its potential at soft power in a different, in a, in a more uh, effective manner and therefore to do that, what exactly are the actionable points that are coming to your mind is my very straight and uh, uh, simple question. So to that end, whatever the suggestions that uh, you have already given to us during various discussion sessions, if still you have any particular very pertinent, focused and precise kind of a suggestion, not a question because no, none of us here are here supposed to answer your questions, but if you have any actionable points to be suggested, which later on we will compile and give to the ministry so that the ministry also works in that direction. So for those things only, I am opening this session for at least another 10 minutes, if not more. Yeah, Rupaji. ऑनलाइन भी इस तरह से सेशन करें कि पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चंस के कौन सी फिल्म आपने कब देखा है और कौन सा फिल्म आपने रिपीट किया है एक क्वेश्चनर सेट करें टू अंडरस्टैंड इंडियंस स्टेइंग अब्रॉड वो लोग कौन सी फिल्म देखना पसंद करते हैं तो फिल्म चॉइसेस के ऊपर डिसाइड किया जाएगा कि किस किस्म की माइंडसेट उनके भी बन रहे हैं और किस किस्म की फिल्म के वो इंतजार करते हैं तो एक चॉइस ऑफ इंडियंस स्टेइंग अब्रॉड उस काम को पता चलेगा मे बी सेमिनार काइंड ऑफ थिंग ऑनलाइन और कलकत्ता आई है ऐसे सेमिनार को लेकर मैं विनोद कटात्रा और मैं एक अछूतों की एरिया से आ रहा हूँ फिल्मों का अछूत जो होता है वो डॉक्यूमेंट्री फिल्म मेकर और चिल्ड्रन फिल्म मेकर आई बिलोंग टू दैट प्लेस मेरा सजेशन एक ही है आगे हमें डॉक्यूमेंट्री और चिल्ड्रन फिल्म्स के लिए भी थोड़ी सी स्पेस दे जाए वो अच्छा Sri Prakash. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, like the West, you know, they dub all the movies in Tamil and many in Indian languages. Why can't we dub in many of the uh, Western and other languages? So that it will have effective impact on those audiences. Ah, please. Vijay Kumar. Now this tempo has to be maintained if we have to take it to any positive, constructive level. I feel we need to have set seminar involving more of film production centers or active producers who matters a lot in this process. So for example, one seminar of this nature or in a large scale in South because uh, regional films of the South are playing a major role in the old India or when it comes to the purpose of house taking abroad. So if you conduct seminar, you know, involving more players or active producers or whoever matters in the industry, one in South is very essential. It can also be have one in North, uh, you know, Bengal industry and all those things. Those seminars will give more impetus 
and we also, you in turn get to know what they are looking for, what are their operational difficulties or what are the things they want in this process. So you are getting one-to-one -one direct interactive opportunity and thus this matter in turn you can compile and take it to the government or concerned bodies and make it more effective. So such seminar may please be arranged. So many more such seminars, uh, regional seminars kind of. Okay. Yeah. You may introduce yourself as well. Hello. Uh, my name is Yashodhara Katkar. Sir, we already have a wonderful platform in form of our IFI, which is our annual showcase of international films to the world. Uh, what we are observing is every year the number of foreigners in terms of directors, producers or uh, technicians, actors and even the foreign audience is becoming less and less over there. Uh, can we not do something better there to improve the invitees there? Because they are our best brand ambassadors. They go back and they talk about Goa, they talk about India, they talk about Indian films that they see and they are our best uh, brand ambassadors and they need to be uh, really made happy, I mean they, they must be made welcome and uh, given us that taste of Indian hospitality, Indian culture and sent back. So we need to really strengthen that aspect because we already have it. Thank you. According to you, what is the reason why the number is diminishing and what is required to be done? Sir, there are many reasons. I cannot go into all of them. But I think somewhere the welcoming part is uh, missing. We are not really welcoming them with that. When, um, if he started initially, uh, there was a lot of force behind that if he, and we all know uh, the I mean, uh, CM at that time, Mr. Banohar Parikar, took so much personal interest in that and he wanted it to be on the global map and he really put that force behind that and the people were coming. Even the foreigners, the audience was made of, uh, you know, the foreigners were coming to see the films. <coughs> now we find that the number is really diminishing. Somewhere I think that welcoming part, the reaching out, the communication to them and uh, saying that please, please come for this, you know, you're welcome here. And that experience should be created for them to do that. If he became more opening and closing function than showing beautiful films. When America has Thanksgiving, we have our refi. So, Half of them, no, none, none of them from America will come to our uh, festival because fam Thanksgiving is an ultimate thing uh, there. So we'll have to schedule it accordingly, the slot. Goa has been fixed for one place for so many years. So, one bar Goa dek liya, char bar Goa dek liya, isi liya aur kohi nahi aana chata hai. Uh, hello, Vinesa, uh, Usha this side from Big FM. I am working with radio and uh, my experience is uh, cinema, basically journalism and uh, film uh, cinema. It's 15 years, almost 15 years. Kal se mein sun rahi hoon kaafi cheezo ko lekar kaafi baate ho rahi hai cinema ko lekar. Lekin hum ek cheez jo dhyan nahi de rahe hai. Dekha jahe to film industry aaj ki date mein corporate ban chuki hai. Agar hum baat karte hai, hum sim badi badi filmo mein dhyan dite hai. Usme star koon hai, usme ye kya hai. Content mein zara dhyan nahi diya jata. इसके लिए अगर मेरी एक सलाह तो नहीं कहूँगी इसको बट एक चीज़ ये देखी जाए कि अगर गवर्नमेंट जिस तरह से पहले हर कल्चर को लेकर क्योंकि सिनेमा जो होता है अगर हम किसी को कंटेंट देते हैं या उसे पसंद करते हैं वो है इमोशन और लोग ज़्यादा उसी तरह की चीज़ों को देखना पसंद करते हैं कि इमोशन कहाँ ज़्यादा है अगर हमारी गवर्नमेंट या कुछ डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज बनती है वो सिर्फ फिल्म फेस्टिवल में बन के रह जाती है पब्लिक नहीं जाती देखने के लिए तो उसके लिए हमें थोड़ा सा ध्यान देने की ज़्यादा ज़रूरत है ताकि ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लोगों तक तो पहुँचे हमारा इंडियन कल्चर जैसे आ, कल बात कर रहे थे इंडिया को लेकर कि हम कैसे मेड इन इंडिया बने तो वो यही है कि हमें अपने कल्चर पर ज़्यादा ध्यान ध्यान देने की ज़रूरत है ना कि कॉरपोरेट की तरफ ज़्यादा जाने की 
तो इसमें इसमें ये है कि अगर सरकार की तरफ से पहल हो उनका इनपुट मिले या वो सलाह दे तो शायद वो चीज ज्यादा बन सकती है थैंक यू सर हेलो आई एम ध्वनि देसाई आई एम एन एनिमेशन फिल्म मेकर वेल व्हाट आई नोटिस इज दैट इफ आई पर्टिकुलरली वॉन्ट टू मेक फिल्म ऑन आर्ट और कल्चर और हेरिटेज or let's say the strength of the tribal culture i don't have much avenues where i could be funded uh, well uh, in india this is our strength when we go abroad people want to know about these uh, things about india if i want to make some films on philosophy animation films on indian philosophy it's not a children subject it's an adult subject which can cater to uh, the outside audience where can i get funding so these are things which i would like to explore but the avenues are very less so if there is some kind of a, a you know places where we could make such films i think it would be a better option you can take three more uh, inputs and then sir i am kuldeep sinha i will just elaborate what i just said uh, that uh, we have to create a film culture right from the beginning because if we don't have that culture people will not be able to uh, make a better cinema or uh, idea of india cannot be executed in that way because now film industry is more business oriented so if we have uh, cinema education right from 6th uh, standard onwards so that people are exposed like we prepare ourselves to become a doctor engineer we should also prepare our students to become a film maker सर आई हैव टू सजेशंस एक तो ये है कि काफ़ी सारे फिल्म मेकर्स बहुत अच्छे आइडिया के साथ फिल्म बनाना शुरू करते हैं और कभी 60 परसेंट कभी 70 परसेंट कभी 80 परसेंट पर आके अटक जाते हैं दे डोंट हैव फंड्स वो आई फील कि एन या कोई और गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन उनको जो 20 30 परसेंट रह गया है बेस्ड ऑन देयर मेरिट्स जैसे वो फिल्में बनी हैं अगर वो हेल्प कर दें उनको तो फिल्में कंप्लीट हो जाएंगी और उन लोगों को भी एनकरेजमेंट मिलेगा आगे फर्दर बेटर फिल्म बनाने के लिए दिस इज़ वन सजेशन द अदर सजेशन इज कि हमारे पास एन की बनाई हुई बहुत सारी फिल्में हैं जो बंद पड़ी हैं रिलीज भी नहीं होती हैं और देन देर आर अदर गुड फिल्म आल्सो सो वाई टर्न द एन एफ टी सी दे स्टार्ट मेकिंग सम थिएटर्स एटलीस्ट वन इन एवरी सिटी जहाँ पे एन की फिल्में जो हैं वो दिखाई जा सकें सब्सिडाइज रेट्स पे दिखाएं इनकी रेवेन्यू भी वापस आएगी और आगे एन के पास फंड भी आएगा फर्दर फंडिंग करने के लिए मेनी यूनिवर्सिटी नाउ हैव इंट्रोड्यूस्ड फिल्म स्टडी एंड दे हैव इंट्रोड्यूस्ड कोर्सेज फिल्म एंड लिटरेचर बट वी डोंट हैव एनी बुक्स बुक्स इफ वी हैव बुक्स ऑलरेडी रिटर्न फॉर स्कॉलर्स नॉट फॉर स्टूडेंट्स even we then have professor and teacher to teach the film and literature so uh, so president iccr and member of the i am just thoda light rehne dijiye hum samapal ki ori ja rahe hain but please light 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 aur itne pe band mat kariye please chandra light de dijiye aur ha Uh, हम इस तरीके से आगे बढ़ेंगे कि मंत्री जी का जो यहाँ पर निवेदन है वो एक लास्ट वर्ड हो जाए उसके बाद कुछ कहने की जरूरत नहीं है तो कुल मिलाकर इसके रोड अहेड के बारे में दो चार चीज़ें मैं केवल आपके साथ शेयर कर रहा हूँ उसके बाद आईसीसीआर के डिप्टी डायरेक्टर जनरल श्रीमती सुमति वासुदेव एक आभार प्रदर्शन करेगी जो हमारे ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी के मेंबर हैं उनको भी हम फेलिसिटेट करेंगे उसके बाद मंत्री जी का जो उद्बोधन है वो हम सुनेंगे उसके बाद राष्ट्रगीत होगा बाद में चाय पीकर हम यहाँ से चले जाएंगे तो सबसे पहले मैं यही कहना चाहूँगा कि इस विषय की ओर कितनी गंभीर उपेक्षा हुई है इसका एक आकलन हमें इन दो दिनों के विमर्श में हो पाया है क्योंकि कुल मिलाकर भारत की सॉफ्ट पावर और सौम्य संपदा के बारे में बहुत ज़्यादा चर्चा होती नहीं और फिल्म एज सॉफ्ट पावर इसके बारे में तो शायद पहली बार इस तरीके की चर्चा हो रही है और इस चर्चा में लगभग 
दस विभिन्न प्रदेशों से यहाँ पर लगभग पचानवे प्रतिभागी सहभागी हुए थे दो दिनों को मिलकर ये भी अपने आप में एक बड़ी अच्छी बात है उत्साहवर्धक है जो दो चार बातें रोड अहेड के बारे में सोची जा सकती है आईसीसीआर भी इसमें अपनी भूमिका निभाएगा एक तो हमारे जैसे एक चर्चा में विषय आया कि इंडियन सिनेमा की व्याख्या में हमारे इंडियन लैंग्वेज सिनेमा भी आता है उसको रीजनल सिनेमा कहने की कोई जरूरत नहीं है मगर इसको प्रमोट करते समय हमने एन कम्युनिटी में जितने सारे भाषिक समूह हैं तेलुगु लोगों की बड़ी संगठन बड़ा संगठन है मराठी लोगों का है गुजराती का है सबका है तो एन में ये जो समूह है ये समूह विभिन्न भाषा समूहों से जुड़े हुए फिल्म निर्माताओं के ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस और आई ऐसा मिलकर इनके बारे में कुछ काम किया जा सकता है बशर्ते ये जो भाषिक फिल्में बनाने वाले समूह है वो अगर हमें अप्रोच करते हैं तो हम जरूर इस पद्धति का कोई गठजोड़ बनाकर आगे बढ़ने की दिशा में सोच सकते हैं इसी के साथ साथ फिल्म फेस्टिवल की चर्चा हुई है और जो फिल्म फेस्टिवल्स में जाने वाले और वहाँ पर जजेस के रूप में काम करने वाले लोग हैं वो मुझसे सहमत हो कि एक स्पेशल कैटेगरी जिसमें सॉफ्ट पावर प्रमोशन फ्रेंडली फिल्म्स ऐसा कोई एक, एक वर्ग बनाया जाता है और उसको अगर हम अवार्ड्स देते हैं इन स्पेशल कैटेगरी फिल्म्स दैट आर प्रमोटिंग इंडिया सॉफ्ट पावर एंड व्हेन आई से सॉफ्ट पावर आई मीन अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट इंडिया ए कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव एंड राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट इंडिया विथ नो काइंड ऑफ डिस्टॉर्शंस और एनी एनी काइंड ऑफ डिफरेंट एंड परवर्ट पिक्चर बींग प्रजेंटेड ऑफ इंडिया सो दैट दैट पर्टिकुलर मेजर ऑल्सो मे पर हैप्स वर्क द थर्ड थिंग विच आई एम ब्रिंगिंग टू योर नोटिस अगेन विच वॉज ब्रॉड टू अवर नोटिस बाय सेवरल पीपल इन डिफरेंट कंट्रीज दैट फॉर एग्जाम्पल अवर वेरी क्लोज नेबर इज म्यांमार and in myanmar also indian films are understandably very popular but they have a complaint that they don't get indian films subtitled in burmese language it's a simple thing there is it doesn't it doesn't require rocket science but we don't have many more burmese language departments in universities and therefore there are very few people who understand burmese language very recently when we observe lokmanya tilak's 100th birth anniversary and since tilak has uh, spent had spent 6 years in yangoon in mandale in fact so our center iccr center at yangoon wanted to do something and we were all set but unfortunately due to covid 19 we could not do anything but when some officials met with aung san suu kyi then that time she was ruling and out of prison so she said i am interested in reading geeta rahasya in burmese language now we are working on a project where geeta rahasya will be translated in burmese language but it's a huge project because we don't have any more experts therefore iccr is going to organize a national seminar on foreign languages training in india and soft power because not just uh, burmese but even kazakhstan kazakh people have a complaint that they are compelled to watch indian movies very popular over there but subtitled in the russian language now they have a kazakh language uzbekistan similarly similar other countries bhasha indonesia bhasha malaysia we don't have many more centers where we teach these languages and therefore in collaboration with ugc we are going to organize a seminar wherein we will take this up but many more agencies also required to come forward to offer subtitling in various international languages especially languages of smaller countries relatively and not those languages which are uh, decorated recognized at the united nations anybody can do that spanish german french it's very easy 
But these languages are also important and in a way it is linguistic democracy. So we should be paying attention to that and we will uh, definitely do our job which is uh, evolving some discussion around this. ICCR has some 37 centers and uh, Flame University or tomorrow maybe even the Film and Television Institute or any other organizations, even film societies can help us. We would like to organize and offer some certificate programs on appreciation of Indian films. They could be virtual uh, training programs, at times they could be actual physical uh, kind of uh, training programs. But if we come together and organize such programs, I am sure the understanding of Indian films will enhance, thereby the understanding of idea in, of India will also en enhance. And therefore, in this particular context also, I seek uh, support from all who can definitely give us some support. But for the filmmakers and film lovers fraternity over here, I would suggest, because whatever we have to do, we will do, even the film university will do. But all, I mean, people like you, for example, I'm just throwing an idea whether some of you can come together and form a global forum against cinematic colonialism. Because this cinematic colonialism is not only affecting India, but Latin America, Africa, Southeast Asia, and several such southern hemisphere countries. So there is a huge uh, potential for South-South cooperation in this particular context. Maybe it will be a good idea that we tell the white dominated uh, Eurocentric thinkers what exactly wrong they are committing, especially and the injustice that is meted out to the southern hemisphere people. So that is for all of you to think about, but I am just uh, sharing this idea with you. So, although the seminar is coming to a close, our agenda will continue and I am sure together we can further enhance Indian cinema and Indian cinematic traditions as a very, very strong soft power. Here in Films Division to have this kind of a concluding or valid presentation is really a uh, very appropriate thing and it's an honor and a great pleasure as well. Uh, before I uh, ask the mm -hmm. organizers to play the message of uh, Sri Anurag Thakur, Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Sumati Vasudevji will propose a vote. Thanks. Hello, uh, everyone. Good. Good afternoon to one and all present here. On my own behalf and on behalf of ICCR, I would like to thank each and everyone present here for uh, making this con uh, seminar a successful uh, event in the last two days. I would like to begin my thanks with, uh, to the uh, Honorable Governor of Maharashtra, who had kindly consented us to provide us the venue, and not only that, he was himself present for the inaugural function, which actually reflects how much the statehood and how much the leadership respects this subject. It is really a representation for us and it's a very welcome representation. The, a very good beginning. So a very great thanks goes to Governor of Mandir Maharashtra. And second thanks to Films Division who has provided us the venue for this conference today, for this day of the conference, uh, without which I'm sure we would have had. And this is the right place. Films Division is indeed the right place for Indian cinema to be concluded and it's a very relevant event. Although, uh, as uh, President Sir rightly said, that we have not come to the end of a conference, but this is a beginning. So this is only the beginning of a deliberation, and we have heard all the participants and everything. What the bureaucracy has to take note of, what are the views of the cultural presenters in the um, field of uh, cinema or music, etc. So, uh, and uh, my special thanks to Honorable President ICCR, Dr. Avina Satrubhavi, because he was involved with us right from the beginning of the conceptualization of this seminar and he had guided us at each and every step including the titling or whatever the content of the conference and each step without his guidance we would not have been able to be so successful at least in the deliberations. Of course the success has to go forward to be taken forward 
it is the success of the deliberation that I want to highlight here. And uh, our thanks goes to Flame University who are our partners in this event. They have been of great help to us right from preparing the e-brochure of the event to this day in getting the participants, eminent speakers, eminent uh, registry, everything they have done for us, ICCR. They have supported us at each and every stage. When I mean the Flame University, the Dean, etc. of the Flame University, and including the organizing committee where many people were present from the Flame University, thanks goes to them also. And uh, particularly I would like to mention the organizing committee also. Beginning with Mr. Yogan Goel, we had uh, Vinod Pavarji from our ICCR, we had uh, Mr. Santosh Pathare, who was one of our speakers, we have Akash Adityalama, we had uh, Vishnu Sharma. I mean, uh, it was very nice to work with them together because I was working with them together and I could see the immediate and prompt execution of whatever guidance was given to this event. And everything was happening in such a time-bound manner that we could really see this day well organized and we could reach out to you through this uh, seminar. So then we go to the, uh, I mean, the audience. I mean, without a proper audience also, we would not be able to uh, see the success of the event. As much as the organizers, speakers and the chair who exactly conveyed the nuances, the challenges, etc. we have been hearing for the last two days was equally taken up by the audience. That was a very great thing and uh, the speakers and the chair never even gave up. They also answered equally. So it was a participative event which was more than welcome. Rather than it only being a one-sided this thing, it, the well uh, participation is uh, welcome. And then finally I thank the media, the team and all the others who have supported us and put this event together. Thanks goes to the regional officers here and all the cameramen and the team person, the personnel in the entire team who have helped us to put this event together successfully. And as uh, President Sir said, after the preparation of the report, I am sure this will be circulated to all authorities and all the authorities will take note of what are the challenges or what are the support they need to do. I am sure it will be done and we will have further deliberations in different states or whatever as the question. So President ICCR would under his guidance and leadership we propose to take this conference further. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'll now invite uh, the Dean of School of Communications of Flame University, Dr. Sajid Narayan, to propose a way forward, which is one way of ending this conference, which is not ending. In a way. Thank you, the organizers and the organizing committee for putting across such an amazing conference. Cinema moves people and uh, brings affinity to its makers, its context, and the characters that are there in the films. Uh, through this, we kind of see, you know, the kind of influence that uh, cinema has over these different sets or these different contexts in uh, the minds of different sets of people. Might be the people who are internal, who are within India, as well as people who are outside, and the perspective of understanding what India is through this powerful medium. The National Seminar on Indian Cinema and Soft Power took on different perspective delving into uh, each aspect of the theme at length. As we uh, concluded, it's kind of uh, nice to take this uh, opportunity to thank uh, each and everyone present here and also invite you to uh, the different filmmakers, uh, people in media, uh, the policy makers, uh, film lovers and all the audience who have so far been uh, focusing and discussing on different aspects of film throughout the uh, couple of days to come out to Flame University, uh, visit us and take these particular conversations forward. Thank you so much once again. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, we are the member of our organizing committee. So, he is also at home, but he is also at home. So, I will call uh, one, of, I mean, one after the other, all of them here. And uh, we will hand over this just uh, a small moment. Thank you. 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 और विष्णु शर्मा
श्री संतोष पाठा रहे हमारे अन्य एक सदस्य हैं और उनको पहले ही हमने सम्मानित किया है सो so, सभी को पुनः एक बार बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद योगान जी और उनके यूनिवर्सिटी ने हम सबको फ्लेम यूनिवर्सिटी आने के लिए निमंत्रण भी दिया है तो मे बी वी कैन नेक्स्ट टाइम मीट एट द यूनिवर्सिटी एज वेल नाउ वी विल लिसन टू द मैसेज फ्रॉम द मिनिस्टर आफ्टर द मैसेज इज ओवर भरत बालाजी ने जो एक बहुत बढ़िया नेशनल एंथेम का एक रेंडरिंग बनाया है उसी के साथ मतलब उसके उस समय हम खड़े रहेंगे वी विल पार्टिसिपेट इन द नेशनल एंथेम एंड द प्रोग्राम विल कम टू ए क्लोज Minister's message. President ICCR and Member Rajya Sabha, respected Shri Vinay Sastrabhote ji, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Namaskar. I am truly delighted to be part of this initiative of ICCR and Flame University, who have jointly conducted this national seminar on Indian cinema at South Pavo. And I am sure this two-day seminar has brought together practitioners and scholars of Indian cinema and international relations to deliberate upon this extremely important cultural component has been immensely beneficial. Indian film industry and government today recognizes and endorses the potential of culture at the highest level. Depiction of one's culture is a very strong component of any country's soft power. The capacities of nation to make themselves attractive in a global marketplace for ideas has become an important aspect of contemporary international relations. Cinema can play a major role in doing this by aiming for nation branding initiatives. The rapid liberalization, deregulation, privatization of media and culture industry have transformed the film industry in India over the past few decades. At the same time, the expansion of global digital media industries and distribution technologies have ensured that Indian entertainment channels and films are increasingly visible in the global media space. Indian cinema also emerged as one of the most notable examples of the global entertainment emanating from outside the western world our cinema is watched by the audiences in many countries across the world the indian cinema is the world's largest film factory in terms of production and viewership soft power and cinematic influence are closely related as cinema is playing a crucial role in expanding the influence and building non material capital in the minds of people and government in multiple countries the perception of india that's popular cinema creates among diverse foreign audiences and the attributes that appeal across culture is vast the indian cinema is not limited to hindi movies the regional cinema has equally vast audience nationally and internationally in terms of the production of feature films and viewership India leads the world every year an average of 1000 films are produced apart from the hindi language cinema other than major industries within india include the tamil telugu bengali kannad also catering to large diasporic constituencies today hindi films are released simultaneously across the globe its stars are recognized faces in the international advertising and entertainment space There are many international festivals and functions centered on Bollywood which are organized across the globe and commands a vast audience. The promotion of family and community oriented values in contrast to the western individualism has made immense appeal to the audience in the Arab world and South East Asian countries. Even the far flung African countries are fascinated by our movies and music. We know about the we know about the countries like Nigeria, where the Nollywood market take a lot of inspiration from Indian cinema. Bollywood has also expanded in the uncharted territories like Latin America. Our cinema is making inroads into countries like South Korea, Japan, and China. We all know that late Raj Kapoor ji, the showman of India, is still. 
highly respected in Russia. This growing visibility of Bollywood outside India has also been bolstered by the emerging synergies with Hollywood. Given the size of India's market and its growing economic progress, Hollywood producers are keen to forge business ties with India. India has a strong demographic dividend. As we have the large population of youth in the world, this will ensure that our ideas, including Hollywoodized entertainment, will travel across the globe in much vaster volume and eventually of a greater value, strengthening the already well-established connection between India and its diaspora, especially due to the digitally connected and globalized communication environment where media play a key role. The Indian film industry and its brand co-opted by the India's corporate and the government elite and celebrated by the members of its diaspora has come to define a creative and confident India. We need to promote a public-private partnership to brand India using the power of our film fraternity and the power of India to create the content and become the content subcontinent of the world with the ever evolving ego, with the ever evolving geopolitical scenario where India is one of the most powerful nation and commands much respect in international platforms, the globalization of the country's popular cinema, aided by large diaspora, can surely create possibilities of promoting India's public diplomacy. And Prime Minister has been speaking about India's public diplomacy. I am sure these kinds of interactions and deliberations will continue in future and carve out ways to further build upon the strength of our great nation. I would like to convey my best wishes to ICCR and Flame University who took this great initiative my special thanks to my senior colleague Shri Vinay Sastrabhutte ji for taking this initiative and inviting me to interact with you, to address you. Thank you once again. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat. Thank you guys for the Oh, my.